Hey guys, it's Jill, Fiber Foozy Crafts. So, so this is what I have worked out in my head so far, according to, and you may recognize some of this, and if you do, that's fine, but I'm not trying to plagiarize anything. There's an awful lot of things out there that are exactly like this. This is just my version of a crochet along making a blanket. So I hope I'm just going to I'm just going to go over this just real quickly. It's a worsted weight number 4. You're going to use an H hook or 5 mm. Your finished size is going to be 59 by 75 approximately. Uh yeah, total of 74 ounces. Okay, now that sounds like a lot, and it really is a lot. It's about, and I worked it out, if they were 200 yards a piece, which is what no, normally your worsted four is going to work out to be, somewhere around 200 yards, probably a little bit more, you're going to need 28. So that's a total of 74 ounces. Approximately 16 ounces of that is going to be used to assemble it which leaves about 58 ounces remainder for other colors. Okay, so it's going to be at 63 squares, and they're all different stitcher, stitches. So that's 63 different stitches. Your gauge will be 25 stitches, will be 7 inches in single crochet. One color is going to be used for your border of each square. So each square will have a color on it and then you're going to assemble the squares and you're going to use that same color to do your border. So this works out to be about 2100 grams or 7180 7, yards. 600 grams or 1500 yards is the assembly. That's one color. Now I'm saying that because you might use some of that color in your squares. It probably would be less if you're only using it for the assembly. About 16 ounces of it is to assemble it. So 1,500 grams or 5,680 6, 5, yards is the 58 ounces. That's how the math works out. But it's 28 skeins. And you're going to use about, what is this? This is 100 grams and 3.5 ounces. So you're going to use approximately six for one color. And then the rest of it would be whatever you want because I'd really like this to be a scrappy blanket. So let me show you what I'm going to be using. So I have a couple of different large amounts of yarn that I have purchased. And this first one is the Mainstays Basic Yarn from Walmart. Now, this yarn is the one that is made in India. Okay, this one is rather soft. Their normal Mainstays is not. So be sure to look for the one made in India if you want a soft version. However, anything will work. Anything will work, guys. You don't even have to do all one color to assemble it if you don't want to. But I have it in this turquoise color. I have it in a black. I have it in pink. And I have it in this green. I also have a super saver in this lemon yellow. And the reason I have this was I was trying to get rainbow colors here. Now I have given some of the colors away from the original rainbow that I was going to make. But this particular one, and I don't know why, but Red Heart is made in America. However, it's made from imported fibers. So it does not say here where they came from, but this particular skein was much, much softer than the rest. And that's why I chose the yellow in it. Okay, so there's those. And then just recently I picked up this uh, Premier Basic from Hirschner's. It was in my Hirschner's haul. I'll leave, I'll leave the link up there if you want to see that. So 
this feels really nice. This is my first time with Premier Basic. I have a burgundy, a navy. This one is nutmeg. This one is ember. This is juniper. I have an Aaron. All in the Premier Basic. Now, these are not exactly the same as far as they're both number four weight worsted. However, if you look at them, they're really close, but the Premier looks just a slight bit more plump than that one. But it is not going to matter at all. But I wanted to tell you all softness, feel, everything. This Premier Basic and this Mainstays are very, very similar. So I have those colors. And then to put it all together, I'm going to use this. Now I have a whole bunch of this. And I did an experiment. And I do not remember which video it was that I talked about this. It was one of my podcasts. But I got this at a, this was Aunt Betty gave this to me. And it was an older yarn. There was a whole bunch of it. She didn't know what to do with it. It's Burnett Afghan. It's a vintage yarn. Okay. Afghan and sweater yarn. And it is 100% blended acrylic fibers. That's all I can tell you. I cannot tell you exactly. This color is natural. However, I do know from somewhere that I have 750 grams of it. So I know that I will have enough of this to do my assembly. And that is what I'm going to be using. And then along with that, interspersed here and there, I'm going to use some number four variegated to do some of my squares also. So if I did my math right, that means that I have a thousand grams of the Premier Basics. Now, you know, I bought that from Hirschner's and they were on sale. And they're still on sale as of my making of this video for a five pack for $17.99. Then the mainstays, I do not know how much they charge for the mainstays. However, I know that it is much cheaper than Super Saver, which is three something. And I have a thousand grams of that. And then I have 750 grams of the Afghan, Burnett Afghan, which leaves me at uh, 2,750 grams, which is plenty for this blanket. But I'm not going to use all of these. I'm just going to use parts of these and fill in also with my scraps of other things I have around. So all of this is just to give you an idea of what you can use. It sounds like a lot of yarn, but you can use a lot of scraps up is what I'm trying to say. And we are going to go over how much each square is going to be whenever I get started, okay? All right, here we go. Also, if I did not mention it, you should have some sort of a stitch marker. You'll need that, and you'll also need a darning needle of some sort to weave in your ends. But we're going to use, and scissors, of course, but we're going to use this to mark the front of our work when we get there. Okay, so we've made our knot. Now we're going to chain 26. So yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull it through, till we get 26. One, two, three. Ten. Twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Okay, so now we're going to go into the first, the second chain from the hook. So that will be that one. So that's one, maybe two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
Now we're going to work in the second chain from the hook, which is that one. The first chain from the hook is this here. We don't count the one that's on the hook. So that first one is the first chain. This one is our second. We're going to go in, in there, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both. And that's a single crochet. Now we're going to do this all the way across. Yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull through both. I do have a beginner video already. I will put a link here to my playlist for You Can Crochet. So I'm going to go in there, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. Single crochet. Some of these first initial squares are going to seem very, very easy to a lot of you. But don't worry, because we have some more difficult, more advanced stitches coming. And as they do, it may take me longer in which to get our video out, because I will have to practice myself. Some stitches even I don't know. So it's going to be fun to learn those together. Coming up to the end. This or not. We do this one. Chain one. Now, before we go on, we want to go ahead and mark the front. So, we're going to put this, whatever you can use, you're more than welcome to put a piece of yarn in a different color and just pull it through and tie it to the front so that it marks as the front of your piece. Okay, so we chain one, now we're going to turn. So row two is the same as row one. We're going to single crochet across and we'll still have 22 stitches. And you'll have 22 stitches in every row. You will do this until your piece me measures 7 inches. But don't fasten off. So we are going to go into this stitch right here. We're not going to do the one that the knot is right there. We'll do the first stitch right there. Because that right there is our chain 1 but it does not count as a stitch. So we're going to go in there, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both. And that's our first one, and that keeps a nice line. The chain one keeps a nice line on the sides. You're going through both those there, see? Going to go through both of those, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. We're going to do this all the way across. Okay, so I'm going to do a few more. And I will meet you back. Okay, I have my square done. As you can see, I have this mark, so it's this is my right side. 
I have seven inches by seven inches. However, that is not a total square for me. For me, I have 25 inches this way, but I have 27 rows. So that's why it's best to make sure that you check to see that you are getting the correct it the this pattern does not tell you to have the same number both directions to be a square but it needs to be seven inches in both directions okay so I want to be clear about this corner here as we start to go around that it's really going to be your decision whether you want to finish off here and do your joining color here or if you want to do the color of what you're working with so it's like I said it's totally up to you but you will use more of your joining color if you do it that way I'm going to go ahead and use the color that I'm using now and then join with my joining color later all right, so this is the last stitch of this corner. I'm going to go in, do that last stitch, chain one. I'm going to come back over here into that same stitch. We're going to do three more single crochets. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to work 25 up this end uh, along the side. Let's see, make sure make sure your front side is facing you also. And we're going to do 25. Now, the way I'm doing that is like right here, that's that uh, row there, and we just finished it off at this end of it. Now, here's this row. We did the three. So we're going to go into that row and count 25. And then I'm going to go into that knot. And I'm going under two piece, two um, strands each time. They're not really stitches because we're on the side here where there's not really a stitch, but we're putting one in the end of each of the rows. There's a knot, but again, I'm under. I'm going over two under two stitches, two strands of yarn. Here's this this one. If you have a hard time getting in there, then you certainly can go down in there. It's not going to be the end of the world. Try not to do it every time. Okay, so we're going to do that all the way down, 25 stitches. Then when we get to here, we'll do three more, 25 stitches, and then do three more, and 25 stitches, okay? And that will bring us back up to here, and I'll meet you back there. Okay, now as I said, these are for beginner videos, so I'm trying to be thorough. Again, we did our three, then we did down the side the 25, did our three. 25 down this end, did our three, did 25 down this end, did our three, and did 25 to here. Well, I'm almost to 25. 23, 24, and here's 25, and I'm going to join with the slip stitch, okay? So this is the first right here in this corner. This is the top of it where we did our three. That's the first one of the three. I'm going to go into that one, pull the yarn through, and instead of uh, I'm going to go in, yarn over, pull it through, and pull it through. So instead of yarning over and pulling through both, you just pull it through both the loops. Okay. 
that is a joining stitch. So the joining stitch, one more time, is to go into those two there, pull up a loop. So we've pulled through those two, and now instead of yarning over, we just pull it straight through. Then you cut it and pull it. And now now you have a finished square. So this is our first square. I really hope I made that clear enough for everybody. Now we're going to go ahead and move into our second square for this video because both this one and the next one are the two most simple squares we will make. So be back in just a minute. If you are marking your first square so that you will know which side is the front side, now most of the time you can tell, but to, just to make sure that you're marking it, what I would do is put your needle through to the back, make a loop, pull it through so that you have one here, go through another side, pull it through, and then just tie this little string so that you have a little bow on the front. And that's the front side of this square. And then or you can just lay them someplace in order. And I would still do this because we're going to number these and this is square number one. So square number one will go here when you finish, after you finish weaving in your ends. And when you finish the next square, you'll lay it right on top. So one will be on the bottom and just make your stacks. But this will mark your front side. Okay. Okay, to begin square two, going to make our slip knot. Give ourselves a little bit of a tail. And again, we're going to chain 26. Take that back. We're going to chain 27. So add one more there. Now, row one, you are going to half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So one, two, and three. Now, in order to do a half double crochet, I'm going to put the yarn over. I'm going to go into that third stitch. We're going to pull up a loop, and we're going to pull through all three stitches. Yarn over, insert the hook, pull up a loop. We have three loops on our hook. We're going to pull through all three. That is a half double. Make 
into all three. Yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. We're going to do that all the way to the other end, and I'll meet you down there. Just a few stitches left. Again, you're going to get down to the end here. You're not going to go into that knot. Now you're going to chain one and turn. And you should have 26 stitches. I'm sorry, 25. Sorry, 25 half doubles is what you're going to have. But one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three, twenty-four, twenty-five half double crochets. Okay, so we did our chain one and turn. Now you want to mark this as the front. Now I'll probably be putting my little piece of yarn on here, but for now, while I'm working with it, I'm going to go ahead and mark it. Now for row two, okay, I said chain one, you're going to chain two and turn. So it's chain two. Okay, now we're going to yarn over and we're going to do the half double crochets and each half double crochet across. And you're going to do that until you reach seven inches. So let me just check real quick, see what we're coming up as. Okay, so I'm good this way. All right. I'll do another row with you, and then I'll let you go. So yarn over, and this first stitch is this one right here. Pull up a loop, pull through all three, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull through all three. Whoa! <laughs> My electricity just bleeped. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. Hold on. Okay, everything's fine. Okay, so yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, and go through all three. Okay, you're going to do that all the way across. And when you get to the end, you're going to chain two, turn, and do it again until you have seven inches.
Okay, now I wanted to give you a closer look at what I am doing here. So, yarn over. I'm going to go through these two right here. Yarn over, pull it through. Yarn over and pull through all three. See this right right there. It's kind of hard to see with this yarn. That's why I decided to give you a little closer up. Now with the last stitch, so we're going to chain one, chain two, and turn our work. I hope that helps. Okay, here is our square, and I wound up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 rows to my 25 stitches. Now you're going to do the same exact things you did on the other square. So we have a chain one, and we're going to go into this stitch right here. And we're going to do three single crochets. One, two, and three. Now we're going to do 25 stitches in these stitches here at the top. single crochets. And I'll meet you at the corner. Now that we're at our corner, we're going to do our three single crochets in that corner. Now we're going to go along the edge and do our 25 stitches along the edge, do our three in the corner, 25 along the edge, three in the corner, 25 along the edge, and we will slip stitch to the top of here, just like on the first square. Okay, now we are up to this last stitch. So we're going to go in right in there. Do this last stitch, and then this one will go right here in the top of that stitch. And we're going to pull it through and pull it all the way through. And then you will weave in your ends. Okay. Okay, here's our two squares that we have done for the first part of this crochet along B squared. So I hope that you've enjoyed these and I, uh, I hope that I become, have made it clear to you and if you have any questions be sure and let me know. 
Um, again, you're going to store these on top of each other like this. So that was one, this would be two. And the reason that is important is because when we go to put these together, we're going to do a little something with the numbers. So there we go. We're on our way to making a blanket. Thank you for joining me. Please hit the like button, please subscribe, and please hit the notification bell, and I will see you for the next tutorial. See you later, and have fun today.